Well, maybe, man. Thank you, Brother Billy. If you brought your Bibles tonight, please turn to Acts chapter 6. I know just a minute ago I mentioned uh, Jana, uh, you know, crying during the, the choir. I should have mentioned something about Billy, but he does it every service, so um, he is our staff ball baby, and uh, that's all right. We love him, though, don't we? Amen. He's got a tender heart, not hard-hearted like the pastor of the church. Uh, I want to invite you to do a couple of things. First of all, uh, I hope you'll be back Wednesday night. Well, we had a great crowd. Had, we served 502 for the Wednesday night meal this past Wednesday night and just had a great, great crowd. The campus was full, RAs, GAs, mission friends, and, and it's just, uh, boy, our youth discipleship is just exploding. And uh, we thank God that uh, they, they literally had no place else to put chairs in the youth building Wednesday night. They had that many young people in there. So praise the Lord, we are one week away from them going into the new youth building, and they're vacating the outback. Yeah, we're just, thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, I talked to Debbie Harkness. She had 112 in the nursery. Brother, if anybody needs to get battle pay, it's, it's Debbie Harkness, amen? Um, well, we appreciate it. But, but if, you're, if you're not here on Wednesday night, you're missing a real blessing. You're missing a blessing. And I want to encourage you to come. That's where you're going to meet a friend uh, to fellowship. You're going to get some really, really good food. It's just $5 a person. Even if you don't have the $5, don't worry about it. You come on and, and eat with us and, and, and then stay for some spiritual food. And I promise you, you will not be disappointed. Uh, also, well, great success with the women's ministry kickoff. Uh, the CLC was full of ministry, and, and, and our ladies just do a phenomenal job, a phenomenal job of ministry in so many different areas. And uh, if, even if you missed that, I, I would encourage you to get in touch with some of our ladies, Rhonda Hammond, who's the... Uh, leader of our women's ministry, you get in touch with them and say, hey, I'd like to plug in. I want to be a part of this because uh, it, it's really a great movement within our church body. Uh, tonight, after the service, if you're interested in going on a mission trip to Brazil down the Amazon River, brother, you talk about a real-life foreign mission. This is where the rubber meets the road. I mean, this is the real deal of impacting people. Uh, Steve Trammell, one of our great friends, I love this guy to death, pastored for years and years, and now is over Amazon Outreach, and um, they do a phenomenal job. If, you, if you're interested in this, if you're interested in helping sponsor somebody or, or in what it is, maybe not this year, but next year, they're going to be having an informational meeting. Steve, I guess you'll be meeting right over here, if that's okay. Okay, yeah, that'll be great. Meet right over in this area. So right after the service, y'all come over there. Brother Steve Trammell's going to meet with you and give you information about it. Uh, about uh, all Because they're going all the time. It's not just us. But, but this is really focusing on, on our group going down the Amazon River to Brazil to, to minister to villages in the name of Jesus Christ. Phenomenal opportunity if you, if you want to take a great, great mission trip. Um, Tomorrow's Churchwide Day of Prayer. We're excited about that. I hope you'll make plans to be here and to come and pray where it's just a few minutes. Even if you can't make it, let's say for instance you got to work and you cannot make it, would you please call our church office and say, listen, I am praying with my church family. We recognize that, that, that this is the day of prayer that we've set aside and that, that prayer is our power. And I want you to know you put my name on that list because I'm going to be praying with my church family. Uh, and then again, technology questions, you can ask Brother Brent, give him a call. He'd love to answer those for you. Somebody said, is that the only three ways to give? I said, no, you can still put in a plate, amen? <laughs> Cash, check, precious jewels, <laughs> costume jewelry, we take anything. Okay, Acts chapter 6, if you would, please stand in honor of God's word. We're going to start at verse 8. <laughs> Phenomenal scripture. Absolutely fantastic. Listen to this. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines, and Cyrenians and the Alexandrians, and some of them of Cilicia and of Asia, disputing with Stephen. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. Then they suborned men, which said, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. Would you bow with me for a word of prayer? God, thank you so very much for inspiring 
Luke to write about the life of Stephen. God, God, we stand in awe of this believer, our, our brother in Christ. And God, honestly, I can't wait to meet him in heaven. God, I thank you that he did not shy away from controversy. God, that you gave us the attributes of his life, and I pray, Lord, that they would impact our lives tonight. Speak to us and give us the courage to respond, for it's in Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. I oftentimes get in, intimidated thinking about the ministers in the Bible that have set the bar so high for somebody like me. And uh, I, I think in the Old Testament of somebody like Samuel that, I mean, was just a phenomenal man of God. He was just a great, great prophet who was in love with our Lord. And, 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 and he said, God forbid that I should sin against the Lord by ceasing to pray for his people. A great prophet of prayer. He's the one that anointed David as the king. Wow. Big footsteps to walk in. I think of Nathan the prophet, the one who had the courage to go to King David and stick his finger in his face and said, Thou art the man. You're the one. You're the one that killed Uriah the Hittite. You're the one that took Bathsheba away from her husband. You're the man. But it took a lot of courage to go do that to the king. Amen. Amen. Well, like he was just doing it to some bum in an alley, he was going to the king of the kingdom, and he had the courage to do it. Elijah, who stood against the 400 prophets of Baal, and by faith dared them to a contest, said, I double dog dare you. Put up or shut up. My God's better than your God. Let's see who will bring fire down and consume the sacrifice. But you talk about faith. You talk about courage. To stand against the 400 prophets of Baal and dare them to a contest. And then Elisha, who took his place, who did twice the number of miracles that Elijah did. And the Bible says, by faith, when his servant came out and said, oh, our enemies have surrounded our house. Then it was Elisha that said, Lord, would you open his eyes? And he opened his eyes and, and the hills surrounding the area was filled with angelic beings, mighty warriors. And the servant said, never mind. <laughs> I could go on and on. Isaiah, who had the faith to, to die. The, the history records that, that they took this great man of God and they shoved him into a hollow log and sawed the log in half with him inside of it. That's how they killed him. Or Jeremiah, who took the word of God to the king and said, this is what God said on my heart. Read the word of God. And he pulled out a pocket knife and cut it to pieces and threw it in the fire. I don't know about you, but if I brought you a sermon and I said, listen, this is what God said on my heart. And you, you cut it in pieces and threw it in the fire. I think I'd get the poochie lip. <laughs> Not Jeremiah. He kept on preaching. He went back and got another copy of it, brought another copy to him. They threw him down in a well. Fed him on bread and water. Said, are you going to change your mind? I said, I'm not changing my mind. God's word stands firm. Brother, big shoes to walk in. What about John the Baptist? My soul. Jesus said there wasn't a greater prophet that's come out of the womb of a woman to, except John the Baptist. I think these are high standards to live up to. If I'm going to call myself a minister, I'm in the same profession as these guys. I've got a high standard of living. High standard of professionalism I got to step up to. But likewise, I think there are many laymen in the Bible that set very high examples. Think in the Old Testament of old Barzillai in the Old Testament. Brother, you talk about setting the standard for sacrificial giving. When David was down on his luck, brother, he literally supported King David single-handedly in his troops. Or the Roman centurion in the New Testament that amazed Jesus with his faith. That Jesus stopped and said, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> you got to see this guy. And the faith of a layman. Or Mary and Martha and Lazarus, Mary Magdalene. Did anybody in the New Testament love Jesus more than those four people? And, and, and then you come to this office called the deacon and one sets the bar so high that it is a worthy hope to walk in the footsteps of this very first deacon called Stephen. So I, I, I don't know. I mean, deacon literally means a servant. It could, it could apply to all of us, but it also 
says that he was the deacon. And brother, you talk about a high standard of, of walking in this guy's footsteps. So, so what we're going to do tonight is we're going to look at a description of, of Stephen and what the Bible has to say about him. And, and, and the Bible begins by saying, and Stephen, a man full of faith, full of faith. Now, I, I need you to see the difference because there, there are different words that are used. If you go backward to verse 5, Acts 6, 5, look back there with me. The Bible says, and, and the saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost. Now, the word that's used in verse 5 is the word pistis in, in the Greek language. It, 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 it's the faith that we're very most familiar with. It's where the Bible says in Ephesians 2, 8, For by grace are you saved through faith, through pistis, and that not of yourself. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. It is the believing what you cannot see as if you could see it recognizing the unseen presence of Almighty God as if you could see it with your physical eyes. This word is defined in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith, pistis, is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, by faith, the elders received and obtained a good report. Through faith, pistis, we understand that the worlds are framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen are not made of the things which do not appear. But without faith, without pistis, it is impossible to please him. It was faith that led Noah to build the ark, amen? Never seen rain before. God said, it's gonna rain, build a boat that looks like an aircraft carrier. And Noah said, okay. He did that by faith, believing that God was a man of his word. It was faith that gave Deli David the, the courage to kill Goliath, to go down and say, I'm not by myself. I'm gonna take this rock and I'm gonna knock your head off. And that's exactly what he did. If you go through the, through the Bible, the, the lessons that Jesus oftentimes trying to teach his disciples is this great lesson called faith. One of the only things he would have chided them about was their faith. They, they, they were in a small boat on the Sea of Galilee. A big storm came up, and brother, it's about to sink the boat. And they go down and wake him up and say, don't you know we're about to perish? And he comes up and says, peace, be still, hush. And, 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 and the wind quits blowing, and the waves quit beating against the ship. And then he turns to him and he goes, where's your faith? I, I put you in a storm to test your faith, and you failed. Where is your faith? How many times would he point out this thing called faith? He, he would say over and over again, by your faith you shall be healed. Oh, ye of little faith. Come on, guys, it's your faith. That's the keystone of what we're doing here. You've got to walk by faith. If you're not walking by faith, you cannot please God. One of my favorite books in, in my library is a bound book on a faith workbook by Manly Beasley. Uh, I got a couple of them. One's the first workbook, and one's the second. Manly Beasley was a great uh, evangelist. I talked to a guy one time. Manly Beasley's passed away, by the way. He's up in heaven getting to see what he believed by faith. But, but I talked to a guy one time. He said, listen, I was at a church. Manly Beasley came, and he was always in very bad health. So he, he was a great man of God in spite of his bad health. And he said, Manly Beasley came to our church for a revival, and he got so sick, he had to go to the hospital. So they gave me a job. They said, your job is to go up and sit in the hospital room and see if he just needs anything. So just keep him company and go up there and just sit with Manly Beasley. So he said he's in the hospital room. He's just sitting there, and in walks Corey Ten Boom. And he said there was a three-way conversation between Corey Ten Boom, Manly Beasley, and Jesus. And he just sat there with his mouth wide open going, It's you recognizing the unseen presence of God in your car when you drive down the road and you don't ignore God, but you walk with him afresh every single day. It's walking by faith. It's saying, I'm not just singing in here so that Brother Billy can hear me. I'm singing for an audience of one, and that's Jesus, and he's listening to what I say. He's listening to how I pray. He's watching how I give, and he's seeing how I respond. By faith, you recognize that this place is filled with holy angels. 
Because the Bible says the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Do you believe it? By faith, do you believe it? I think a lot of church members do not. Otherwise, they wouldn't be sitting at home watching Bonanza. They'd want to be in here where the angels are at. Amen? Uh, I want to be a man full of faith. But that's not the word used in verse 8. The word used in verse 8. So, so the Bible does say in verse 5 that he is a man full of faith. Pistis. But that's not the word that's used in verse 8. In verse 8, the word that's used is charis. C-H-A-R-I-S. It's from where we get the word grace. And if you have a more modern translation, it probably says that he is full of grace. So what is the definition of grace, Brother Sam? What's the definition of this word called full of faith, full of grace? It means a virtue coming from God. That which brings delight, joy, and happiness is synonymous with the attributes of mercy and forgiveness. On day six of creation, this is how God created man. Listen to the conversation of Genesis 1.26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and every creeping thing and that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his image. And in the image of God created he him. Male and female, he created thee them and God blessed them. So what does that mean? Do I physically look like God? God looks like Sam DeVille? Well, that'd be bad. <laughs> but what it means is that through our spirit, we can emulate the wonderful characteristics of our Heavenly Father. We're a chip off the old block, amen? We can exercise grace. We can experience joy unspeakable, a peace that passes all understanding, to love the unlovable, to be merciful and kind, not because someone deserves it, but because your character desires it. That's called grace. To love the unlovable, to exercise mercy, not because somebody deserves it, but because you're full of grace. It's those wonderful attributes of God that draw us to his side that say, I want to spend time in prayer because my God is a gracious God and he's full of grace and mercy. It's what makes us, oh, sorry, rotten, sinning individuals Worth wanting to be around when God covers you in grace. And almost every letter that Paul writes, he will say, I desire for you grace. I want you to be covered in it. And the Bible says that Stephen was full of grace. He was full of the lovely things of God, the lovely attributes of God that you have the ability to have inside you if you know God. If your spirit has been quickened, you can be full of grace too. The whole church loved Stephen. Just loved the sucker. They wanted to be around him because it was just like being around God. And it's like he had this wonderful aroma of Jesus Christ all over him. And when you leave a room, they go, boy, it just smells like Jesus has been in here. That's what grace is. And that's what we ought to be covered in. And then the Bible goes on to say, not only is he full of grace and full of faith, but he was also full of power. And the word that's used there is a word in the Greek language called dunamis, and, and it's where we get the word dynamite. So, so we think about that, but I don't think that's a good word because dynamite goes pow, and then it's gone. That's not how Christians are, are we? No, 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 it's not the day you get saved. You go, oh, I love Jesus, pow, and then you quit. No, no, no. Instead, a better word would be dynamo. What about that? Like the Energizer Bunny, you never quit. <laughs> Full of power. Not your power, but power from God. Power that God gives you, that he rests upon you. Right before Jesus ascended up to heaven, this is what he told his disciples in Acts 1, 8. But you shall receive power. So he told his disciples, you shall receive dunamis. 
After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth. See, if you go with Steve Trammell down to Brazil to try to reach those villages, you're not going to go in your own power. Please don't go in your own power because that's worthless. All you're going to do is just mess things up. You need to go in the power of God. And when you are weak, he is strong. Amen. 2 Timothy 1, 7 and 8 says this, For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of dunamis, and of love, and of a sound mind. Be not therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but be thou a partaker of afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. We are not called to be an impotent church, but a powerful church to the pulling down of strongholds. Amen? That's our job. That's why we're going to pray. Because we want this church to be filled with power. You know how you lose your power? Stop getting on your knees. Stop praying. Think, you, th th think you're so good that you don't need to pray. I'm so holy I don't have to come before Almighty God. I'm powerful enough without God. Oh, my dear friend, you, that's exactly where the devil wants you. You need to literally roll out of bed onto your knees saying, God, I don't have sense enough or powerful enough to walk to the dresser drawers without you. God, you've got to empower me. You've got to empower me. Acts 6, 8, and Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. You need to understand me. I do not have the ability to perform miracles at will. Did y'all get that? I, Sam DeVille, do not have the ability to perform miracles at will. I cannot go through a hospital and go, you're cured. You're cured. You're cured. I don't have that ability. I do go and I pray for people, but I do not have the ability to immediately cure people. But I will say this. Over the years of my ministry, I have seen God do many miraculous things that I can attribute to nothing more than the power of Almighty God resting in my life. Blows me away. At the most unusual times too. Revivals in dead churches that defied all logic. And usually it was when I would invite the crummiest preacher that couldn't preach your way out of a wet paper sack. And I'd be so scared at what the guy was going to say, I'd be on my face before God in fasting and God would pour out his spirit on the church. I love the Old Testament. If you know me, you know I love the Old Testament. I love talking about the Day of Atonement when the high priest will, will take those sacrifices and he'll go into the uh, mercy seat and he'll sprinkle blood on the mercy seat for the sins of Israel. And just amazing the, the pictures that we have there. This guy was preaching on it. I, I had a guy preach on it in Mount Pleasant. Most horrible sermon I've ever heard in my life. He stood there and he went. But he would. He'd go, he'd go over and take it. No, he wouldn't do that, no. He, well, he go in, in it's, no, uh, he, well, he go over, he get the goat, and no, it, it was a lamb. It's, he'd take the lamb, no, he'd get the goat. And he's preaching like this, and I'm going, <laughs> so finally, mercifully, he has an invitation. He says, that's, uh, that's all I know. All right, let's have the invitation. And, 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 and I'm telling you, people came down by the droves, <laughs> weeping. Repenting, marriage is getting people getting saved. And I'm going, did y'all hear that sermon? <laughs> that was horrible. I had one lady call the next day and she said, Brother Sam, oh, I'm so glad I got saved. Oh, I'm so glad. Would you please explain to me what that guy was preaching? I'm going, you came down. <laughs> but that's God's way of going, listen, Sam, I don't need you. I can pour my power out if you will humble yourself. And when you're weak, I will take the foolish and confound the wise. I've seen God's hand of protection and provision on me and my family that were absolutely unexplainable. When we didn't have anything in the cupboard, God always provided. Believe it or not, I know you look at me, my slim physique, and, and I've never missed a meal. In fact, I've had more than my share of extra meals. But God has protected me 
from people who've had nefarious means, who've tried to set me up. My God has protected me miraculously. I've seen people miraculously healed through the results of a praying church body. So hear me well. I tell you that the man of power is a man of prayer. And that if you will commit yourself to coming before the throne of God and praying something more than God is great, God is good, let us thank him for our food, that God will use you. And you begin to record those prayer requests. And you begin to log them down. And the times that you come in the presence of God and you stand in the gap for those that are lost and those that are in the pig pen of life. And you begin to pray for those that are sick. And you begin to lift them before the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. And I'll promise you, you will become a great man of power and great wonders. But not if you're not willing to pray. And stand in the gap and stand in the presence of Almighty God. He was also full of wisdom. Acts 6, verse 9, listen to this. And then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines, or the freedmen, Cyrenians, Alexandrians, and of them of Cilicia and of Asia, disputing with Stephen. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. The Libertines were the synagogue called the, the synagogue of the freedman. Uh, it, it was a group of people that had been taken slaves in about 60 BC, 60 years prior to the birth of Christ, and they'd been taken to Rome as a prize. So uh, Rome had beaten the area of, of Judea. They'd taken slaves and they'd taken them back to Rome, and later on they freed their families. So they, they started a synagogue, and literally these people were from Rome, okay? They were uh, Hellenistic Christian, uh, Hellenistic Jews that uh, had come from Rome and were down in the, in the Jerusalem area at this particular time. It goes further and it says that there were Cyrenians and Alexandrians. These were from North Africa. Those of Cilicia and Asia were, were the area of modern day Turkey. So literally what's taking place here is there's a formal debate that's called. It's Stephen, the deacon, against Jews from Rome, Asia Minor, and Egypt. So they're from the north, the south, and from the west. And they're all going to gang up on him. See, they're going to gang up and say, listen, buddy boy, we're going to squash you. But the Bible says in this debate that Stephen was so full of the Holy Ghost, so saturated in the scriptures, so full of grace that these other guys never stood a chance. Pow, zoom. (laughs) Jesus said in the last days, Matthew chapter 10, verse 17, you need to beware of men for they will deliver you up to the councils and they will scourge you in their synagogues. And you shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against uh, them and the Gentiles. And when they deliver you up, take no thought of how or what you shall speak, for it shall be given to you in that same hour what you shall speak. For it is not you that speak, but the spirit of your father which speaketh in you. So in other words, the Bible says one of these days, if we're in the end days, and if we're truly living for Christ, some people who think they're doing God a favor will actually drag us before their counsels. And I guess it would be okay if you said, well, I'm going to make me a speech. I'm going to have everything just right so that I can tell. And the Bible says, no, 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 don't do that. Don't worry about that. Because in that day that you stand before those who are blaspheming Jesus Christ or wondering why you're saying he's the only way, the truth, and the life and why you're not serving the Antichrist or why you're not going with everybody else in the ecumenical movement, then God is going to supernaturally give you the wisdom to confound those counsels. But here's the thing. Hear me. I believe that's for those people who are saturated in God. That have been prayer warriors. That are used to standing in the very presence of Almighty God. 
that, that have a hunger for the Word of God, that feast on the Word of God on a regular basis, that love to hide God's Word in their heart that they might not sin against the Lord, uh, so, so that when you get there, you're so full of God that the Spirit of God gives you exactly what He wants you to say, just like Stephen. It's not that person who goes, well, I go to church once a month, and, and I never open the Bible, and I never pray, and I don't go to, to, to prayer day, and I don't go to Sunday school, and I don't come on Sunday night, and I don't come on Wednesday night, and I just don't pray with my family, and I don't do nothing. You got nothing. You're going to stand there and go, blah, 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 blah. But if you're so saturated in Jesus, God's going to give you the words to say. But he always does. So what he's saying is the example we've got as church members, as Christians, is of this phenomenal individual by the name of Stephen. But my question is, why can't we all be like Stephen? Why can't we all be full of grace? The pistis type that says, listen, I'm going to recognize the unseen presence of God. Whether anybody else does or not, I'm going to. I'm going to do what he tells me to do. I'm going to kneel in my prayer closet and I'm going to pray to him. Although I've never seen him, I'm, I'm, I'm going to believe that he is who he says he is. I'm going to walk by faith. And then my life is going to be characterized by grace. I'm going to try to be a chip off the old block. I'm not going to be ugly or mean. I'm going to be full of grace and mercy and, and forgiveness. And, and, and I'm going to try to have the attributes of my heavenly father. I want to be full of power. I want to make a difference. Not in my strength, but in God's strength. And I know to do that, I've got to kneel before almighty God. Because when I'm weak, he's strong. I want to make a difference. I don't want to be a Christian for 20 or 30 years and have never seen a miracle in my life. I don't be a man of power. I don't be a man of wisdom that takes the word of God, that understands the word of God and applies it to my life. So that when and if I stand before the heathen or a lost person, I'm always able to give an answer of not what I believe, but what God's word says. Confidence in the word of Almighty God. So I'm going to ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes. Billy's going to come and lead us in hymn of invitation. Heavenly Father, I just pray right now that God, we will have a desire to be so much more. God, we don't want to be an impotent church. We don't want to be a church that that never has a miracle occur. God, we long to see families brought back together miraculously. God, we long to see people that are addicted to drugs and to alcohol miraculously delivered from those things, that the chains will fall down, that, that, that the captive will be set free. Oh, God, we long to see the sick healed where the only thing we can say is that was a God thing. Man couldn't do that. God, we want to make, be people that just make a difference. Oh, God, help us make a difference. And we will give you glory and praise, for it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Guys, this evening we're going to have an invitation, an opportunity for you to respond. God spoke in your heart. I am not the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit, I believe, has been dealing with people. Maybe it's about your personal prayer life. Maybe it's about your personal devotion to the Word of God. Your daily quiet time that you may have been neglecting for day after day after day. Are you a person of power? Or do you just watch everybody else around you exercise that same power? It's available to you. Stephen's no better than you are. He's a person just like you. If you're willing to walk in those footsteps. So I'm going to ask you to stand. The altar is open as we begin to sing. Brother Billy's going to lead us as we sing. You come. You come.